and Iranian special forces boarded the MSC Ares by repelling from a helicopter. The Portuguese flagship is linked to an Israeli billionaire. Its owners say there are about 25 crew members on board. There's lots of different parts of this story. We want to dive into all of them with Brian Stewart. He's a former CBC foreign correspondent, and we've often turned to him for these big international stories, including today. Brian, thank you so much for making time for us. My pleasure. Brian, we've got Joe Biden canceling his weekend trip to Delaware, heading back to D.C. We've got the Israelis issuing all kinds of alerts, everything from the top military officials to schools canceling trips. And meanwhile, the world is waiting to see what Iran can and will do. How seriously should we be taking any sort of threat from Iran? Well, I think it has to be taken very, very seriously. Uh, whether or not it's going to deliver the maximum punch uh, is much in question, but this, the, the potential is there in a very big way. It has, for instance, nine different uh, missiles, ballistic missiles capable of striking inside Israel. It has cruise missiles. It has drones. It has them in very large numbers. It even has a, a new missile, the Fatah, which is one of those hydrosonic missiles that travel at unbelievable speeds, over 10,000 miles an hour, and are very hard to detect because they're maneuverable. So Iran is not like some of the proxy forces with a limited arsenal of weapons. It has an enormous arsenal of various weapons, highly technical, very sophisticated to some of them. It's had a lot of advice and, and guidance over the years from Russia, from China, from North Korea, but also its own technical ability in this area is substantial. Uh, this is an ability not only to just strike inside Israel, but to do it in a precision way. So it could go after military targets and say, we're not hitting civilian targets like the Israelis do in Gaza. We're separate. This is surgical. So all of these things have to be taken very seriously. So you clearly indicate that they have the capabilities to have, as you described, the maximum punch in terms of a retaliation. Do they have the desire, do they have the will to carry out such an attack? That's an excellent question. And really, uh, nobody knows. Go around the world and listen to diplomats. They're all wondering, what, what really is going through Tehran's mind at the moment? Take a few things. There are, for instance, thousands of foreigners living in Israel, thousands of Americans, in fact, uh, to kill some of them by error or design would unquestionably bring a heavy counterblast against uh, Iran in some way. Um, it knows that the harder it strikes at Israel, the harder Israel will strike back. And Israel has an enormous capability of doing enormously significant damage inside Iran, perhaps even to its nuclear program, which is the most precious thing it's trying to guard. So it risks that coming under attack, the bigger it scales up or escalates the attack. Also has other concerns. Listen, from this point of view, uh, the Gaza-Israel conflict is going very much in its favor. Iran is gaining uh, influence throughout the region. Still more, its proxies are looking uh, more aggressive. Israel seems to be diplomatically uh, suffering quite severely around the world, which pleases Iran very much. So therefore, things seem to be going well for Iran in many ways right now. Why would it risk that for a small reward of one or two strategic strikes, or st sorry, surgical strikes inside Israel. That's open to question. And finally, I should mention that Iran has a lot of economic problems. It, it has, in fact, a, a quite severe economic crisis at the moment. And a lot of Iranians do not want uh, more war at this moment. They're, they're, a lot of them are, pe are doves. A lot of them are against the regime. There's a lot of domestic turmoil. So this might not be a good time for Tehran to attack uh, on, on some of those scores. On the other hand, it's, it, it has hawks that will be saying, listen, unless Iran really shows that it is play, it isn't in this game and it supports the, the, the uh, proxy militias around the Middle East, but it has to show that it too is going to be attacking. So it may come down to a question that Iran has to face if we don't attack, we may lose credibility. If we do attack, who knows what we may lose.
a lot of questions in Iran as well as around the world. Big questions. And so you mentioned, of course, the, the central part of this whole story is what's happening in Gaza. And as you rightly pointed out, the Israeli government is losing support increasingly. People are very concerned about the loss of life, the utter destruction that they're seeing in the Gaza Strip. So we have a clear global empathy towards ordinary Palestinians in this particular situation. But if Israel and Iran come to blows in any sort of real way, where do you think the world lies? Who's, neither one of these states are in a great diplomatic position right now. Correct. And though Iran has the solid backing from Russia and North Korea, to some degree China, uh, and it has a, a number of uh, friendly regimes. However, you're right. Uh, the American public does not want to get involved in the Middle East conflict. Certainly, Europe doesn't want to get involved in any kind of Middle East conflict. Everybody wants this to simmer down. Everybody wants to end this crisis outside of Israel uh, and, and Hamas, Gaza, and, and perhaps Iran. So, I mean, what, what, how the world will react? In horror, it will put more pressure on Tel Aviv to end this war now before it escalates into a full major regional war. Um, but right now, people are wondering, how do we know how we're going to react if we have no idea what we're going to be reacting to? Mm -hmm. How big an attack? This is one of those moments when the question marks overwhelm everything else. So where does that leave those of us who are watching on the outside, the, the European nation states, Canada? Is there a role for Canada to play in all of this? Not much of one, to be honest. I mean, it is expected to make statements in that, but I don't think anybody uh, in Israel or in the Middle East right now is, is particularly concerned with positions Canada takes. I think the, the world pressure is already on to end this. Mm -hmm. it, Israel is not uh, responding to it yet, and Hamas may want to keep the, the, the war going as long as possible. Iran may want to keep it going on. So really, there's not much that can be done except from the United States and certain European powers could use leverage uh, against Tel Aviv to wind up the campaign in Gaza. They could do that. Whether the U.S., whether in its current political uh, travail, uh, would, would seek to do that is very questionable, though. It, it's, Biden would be caught in a trap between supporting Israel, which a great many Americans would expect, and, and, and wishing to keep away from a conflict, which even more Americans now seem to wish for and expect. What I've heard repeatedly in the past couple of days, in fact, is that if Iran's going to launch an attack, it's going to be within the next 24 to 48 hours. So if 24 to 48 hours pass and nothing big happens, can we all breathe a sigh of relief that, okay, this thing has passed for now? No, well, actually, this is a, an important point because Iran may be saying, look, look at all the damage we could do to uh, the U.S. and to Israel by just keeping everybody guessing, keeping everybody's nerves on edge. And we don't have to attack. We just have to keep dropping hints that we're going to attack. That becomes a real dilemma for the White House and, and for the government in Tel Aviv. How often can you keep predicting an Iranian attack? It doesn't come, yet it might come a few days later. So really, everybody seems now on kind of a horns of dilemma. So, and I don't think it's very easy, quite frankly, to really pinpoint how they're going to react in advance of this. Um, I, th I would think Iran is not going to launch a huge major attack. And I would think it's quite possible it will let this delay over time just to see how much the strain on nerves and on um, stress systems uh, uh, can account for in both the United States and Israel, which are the key targets right now. Okay. We'll continue to watch and see how things develop. Former CBC foreign correspondent Brian Stewart, thank you. It's always an education. My pleasure.